Uh, so this time we're going to talk to you about how we're measuring productivity in the institution. Uh, the main problem we have is that uh, it's like a requirement uh, that we present some reports annually about the productivity of the institution, of the Institute of Mathematics. Uh, we have to present reports, individual reports, one for each uh, researcher and a global one for all the institution. So we also have to estimate, uh, depends on the work of the previous years, how, how is going to be the production of the researchers for the future years. Uh, so what, what we measure, we, what we measure is the number of articles the researchers uh, publish every year, uh, the number of, of courses they, they taught, number of books they write, a conference uh, they give, how many students they graduate by year, and some other, uh, and some other things. That's by research and then we have to count all that and report as a unit. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have different campuses. Uh, one is in the Mexico City, one is in Oaxaca, one in Juriquilla, and another one in Cuernavaca. So we also have to give reports by unit. Uh, we also want to to see how, how is one researcher compared to the global productivity of the, of the institutions, so we can see how is he working, right, compared to a global number. So, so this is a, a big problem. They used to solve this. They, they used to give reports annually, but in paper or everyone have a different format. Uh, so some years ago, we start uh, with Plon. We make a CV content type, uh, well, a CV package, which has all these content types, articles, books, courses, students. Uh, and we have been collecting all this kind of, all, all this information in, uh, in our database in Plon course. So we, have a, so we already have a curriculum vitae database of the person that worked in the institution. Uh, some of the, some, some content we can get from official sites like this one that it's called MathSciNet. Uh, this is a site that indexes all the articles the mathematicians publish. And fortunately, this has an ID for each person. So it's easy to know which are the articles that the person has published by year, for example, or the entire life. So we make a, a web scrapper that search that engine, that search engine and we can retrieve all the articles of the people that work with us, and every year we take that information and upload that to our database. Uh, we also have a web service which uh, we can retrieve information from courses that they thought at the university. Uh, the Faculty of Science, we, that is uh, the place where they teach courses, uh, has this service. We just make a request to the web service, get the courses they give this semester, and upload that to the to the CV. Mm -hmm. So, well, once we got all this information, we can start thinking and doing some data visualizations and data analysis in all these things, and we have developed some. Uh, basically, those are some browser views on on all this information. 
So we can have, uh, for example, that one is the number of conference, and we also classify those conference by, by different kind. Uh, okay. For example, the, the first one is a conference of research conference. The second one is uh, workshops. And we can see how, how many of them have been by year. This is just an example. It's not the real data. But uh, for example, we have in 2011 190 uh, conference. And we can see how this is going uh, increasing or decreasing. So we can see. We, have, we can have an idea of how the, the production of the institute is going in individually by type. And then one, we can go a little further and, and compare that number with the number of researchers we have or by number of units of the institution. Uh, here we are using a JavaScript library for charts. It's called High Charts, and it's it's kind of dynamic. We, we'll see a demo, but it's a nice JavaScript library for for charts. Um, we can have an average of by campus, as I said, and. All this is dynamic, so every year the, the researchers, when they send their final report, this goes dynamically filling. We can also search that by gender, uh, so we can see how is women producing or men compared to men. It's, th those are factors that there is that are important for the university. So, so we have that kind of, of comparisons. We can also have, uh, in a certain type, for example, articles, we can compare how many publications they have, how many scientific publications, uh, how many publications are in proceedings, uh, how many uh, articles they finish, how many they send, how many are being accepted but not published, uh, those kind of small details we, we compare here. And then we have, we can compare that to a particular user or researcher against the productivity of all the institution. Uh, we also have individual views so we can see how the productivity of each person is going through the years. Uh, that's number of articles, that's number of congress, conference, or talks given. And, and that's, so let, let me show you a demo. Uh, I don't want to see a, I don't want to make a live demo because I will skip some, probably I will skip some of things that I would like to show you. So this, basically this is the portal of the institution where we have the system. So here we can see how we have all the, uh, those graphics by year. Uh, that library let us have this kind of animation well, or where you can see in the graph the value of each year. Uh, so, so we thought that kind of graphs give you a, a fast idea of how, how it's going, how things going. Uh, all the kinds, 
articles divided by different classifications. The total number of articles without caring about the classifications. Uh, that's because of the university asked us uh, that fine grain classification. So we can go to articles and see more specific data. The same, uh, we can navigate the graph and see real values in, in the graph that are actually the data in, in the right. Uh, we can play with the graphs and hide some of the units in this case. And actually the, the graph uh, moves, well, actualize the values, comp the comparison that they had. That's, that's nice. So if you are interested just in comparing two units, you can do that. Uh, by gender, for example. Uh, all the information it gave us. <clears throat> then we have more, this is like more general classifications in, in, in this part, and then it comes uh, particular classifications by articles. Uh, those are the, sorry, it's in Spanish, but uh, those are the published articles, and we can start clicking here and compare subclassifications and the graphs uh, going changing so we can have a better idea of how two classifications compare each other. So we can start playing with that. And again, we can see the real values there. <coughs> send an articles, finish articles, and then we can access the real data of every one of those items that count in the graphs. We can have access right here that it takes us to the real content with when they filled all the information of each of those articles. We can make sort, uh, that's, that's the basic sort uh, long cables. Uh, we can list that by year. And we can do that with every with every one of the content types we have. We have almost we have like three content types. The the things that researchers can report. So like books, uh, thesis. That those are all the kinds, all, all the kinds of types we have, and we can see we have some very uh, which one that are graphs very large. And those ones. Here we can make the the pro the individual productivity, all the users in the system, all the researchers there, and we can go to a specific one. This is a test user, <laughs> and we can see how it's going to be, how, how, how his productivity has been in the last couple of years. Uh, we actually, we started in 2011, so we don't have uh, background information. Uh, and again, we can go inside each of one of those types. So this can give us uh, an idea of, of how, how the productivity of each person is going on the institute. But basically, it's 
so we can give reports to the university. And this is, and, and here we are comparing individual production with the global one. For example, this person uh, teach much courses than the average one. Uh, the graph gives just the average, and this one gives, for example, three courses a year, and the average was dot 76. We can also uh, make small comparisons, not with all uh, types, or subclassification, sorry. Uh, Uh, well, this is uh, this is working in Plum 4, all the content types and the CV package and and those visualizations we implement them in Plum 4. Uh, we are in the process of migrating all the site and content types to Plum 5. It's going to be kind of difficult because uh, we want to migrate to Dexterity since we are working with archetypes in right now. Uh, it's going to be a I think it's going to be a kind of complicated. <laughs> uh, at least it's going to take some time. Mm, but we are working on that. Uh, well, that that's uh, well, that's that's all. Thanks. Thank you very much. Um, are there questions or comments from the audience? Thank you for the presentation. Could you just uh, uh, repeat the name of the library you were using for the graphs? Because I missed that. The office high charts. Pie charts. High high charts. High charts. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Another question. Um, it's like a very rich interface. I want to, maybe you can tell a bit about how do you feed like this library? How is the content uh, stored? Is it on the content type? So when you show the charts, where, where is it getting the data from? Uh, well, that, that's something we have to work on because uh, actually we are indexing too much information. We have all mm -hmm. these all the the data we need to search in is in the catalog and sometimes it feels slow I think it's because of the probably because we are not JavaScript programmers <laughs> so probably that's uh, the thing that we have to to fix uh, before the the, uh, the the results of the database how to give that result to a JavaScript. Uh, so yes, all the information is in the catalog. Mm -hmm. Looks very cool. Um, more questions? If not, then I close the session and thank you again for your talk.